Hello friends, this video on structural organization of animals part 39 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So with this, uh, we have reached towards the end of this lesson. I mean, this lesson was quite uh, lengthy. So a lot of videos have been prepared on this, but I hope that it would have helped you. We have not gone into too much of details about any of these organisms, be it frog, earthworm or a cockroach. But as you go for further studies, I mean, as we make more videos for, uh, say, competitions or for higher classes we will get into the details of each of these so these videos are prepared as per your level so we did not get into many of the minute details so with this i'll conclude this lesson but before we complete this lesson we'll quickly look at some of the questions just to check whether you got it right or not so let us look at question one. It says, distinguish between prostomium and peristomium. You remember when I was talking about the segmentation of earthworm, I told you that these two terms look very similar, but they are not the same. So when I say peristomium, it is the first segment of the earthworm. But when I say prostomium, it is not at all a segment. It is not a segment. It is just the covering of the mouth which is present in the first segment. So if you closely look at this section, this entire thing is the first segment. This entire thing is the second segment. This entire thing is the third segment. So this first segment is peristomium. But this lead or this covering of the mouth is prostomium so peristomium contains prostomium prostomium acts as a wedge which helps earthworm to burrow into soil as i said it acts as a weapon for them to dig into the soil peristomium it surrounds the mouth opening so it is the first segment so it surrounds the mouth opening question number two distinguish between septal nephridium and pharyngeal nephridium we talked about three types of nephridium, septal, pharyngeal and integumentary. So let us quickly see their difference once again. Septal nephridium was present behind the 15th segment whereas pharyngeal was present near the pharynx. So it was present in the earlier segments somewhere here. So here we had these tufts of nephridia which we saw were the pharyngeal nephridia whereas the nephridia which we saw around this region was the septal nephridia. So sept septal nephridia is present on both sides of intersegmental septa whereas pharyngeal nephridia is present as paired tufts. So here you can see tufts are present, paired structures but here they are present uniformly throughout. Question number three, what are the following and where do you find them in animal body? Chondriocytes, axons and ciliated epithelium. So we have spoken about chondriocytes, they are nothing but the cartilage cells. So where do we see them? We see them in the cartilage obviously, right? And cartilage is the connective tissue. Axons, they are the tail like structure of neurons. So where do we see them? We see them in the nervous tissue. Each cell of nervous tissue is neuron and the tail like structure of the neuron is axon. Ciliated epithelium is seen in the inner lining of bronchioles so we can see them in the respiratory tract where in the inner linings they are ciliated that is epithelium with cilia so cilia will ensure more absorption. So they help to trap the foreign dust particles. Let us look at the next question. Distinguish between simple epithelium and compound epithelium. I had spoken about uh, this before also. Simple would be single layer. Compound would be multiple layers. So when I talk of simple epithelium, they are generally used to line the body cavities, ducts, etc. Whereas when I talk about compound epithelium, they are protective in function. Because when you have multiple layers, it actually gives a cushion-like feel. So it ensures protection. So this is the difference between the two. two. This will be simple epithelium and this will be compound. Let us look at the next question. Distinguish between adipose tissue and blood tissue. 
Now both of them are connective tissue but blood is a fluid connective tissue whereas adipose is a loose connective tissue where uh, the, they are very loosely connected to each other. There is a lot of empty space between the cells. Adipose tissue is located below skin whereas blood is located throughout the body. Adipose tissue store fats and blood transports gases, nutrients and waste products. So this is how their structure would look like for adipose tissue. So too much of adipose tissue would mean obesity. Let us look at question number six. Distinguish between simple gland and compound gland. Here again, simple gland means single cell. So the gland is made up of only one cell that is unicellular. Whereas compound gland is made up of multiple cells that is multicellular. Examples of simple gland would be goblet cells of the digestive tract and compound gland would be the salivary gland which secretes saliva inside our mouth. Let us look at question number 7 and the last question of this lesson. Mark the odd one in each series. Arolar tissue, blood, neuron, tendon. So arolar tissue, what type of tissue is it? It is a connective tissue. Blood is again a connective tissue. Neuron, it is a part of nervous tissue. Tendon is again a connective tissue. So which is the odd one? Neuron, because it is not a type of connective tissue. RBC, WBC, platelets and cartilage. It is very simple. RBC, WBC, platelets, they are all components of blood. Whereas cartilage is a different connective tissue altogether. So cartilage is the odd one out. Now, just for, just to let just to know that if you have understood the lesson well, which is the fourth component of blood? RBC, WBC, platelets and? Yes, you are right. Blood plasma. The next series, exocrine, endocrine, salivary gland and ligament. So exocrine is a gland, the glands with ducts. Endocrine glands are again the gl ductlets glands. Salivary gland is again a gland. Ligament, it is not a gland, it is a connective tissue. So ligament is the odd one out. Maxilla, mandible, labrum and antenna. So these are all parts of cockroach. So maxilla is a mouth part. Again mandible is also a mouth part. Labrum is also the mouth part. What about antenna? It is not a part of the mouth. It is located outside mouth. It is located in the head region. So antenna is the odd one out. So with this we have reached towards the end of this lesson. I hope this lesson would have helped you. Please uh, go through the lesson and wherever you feel that the basics have not been discussed in detail, please refer the videos of class 9th or 10th wherever applicable. So see you all in the next lesson. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.